We in our house, ay. it's full of trees, ay. We on the couch, ay. it's full of breeze, ay. We downtown, ay. we playing around, ay. it's on a podcast, we go around, ay. I'm with King Kwan, I'm with Kahari, and it's just Gartasia in a party, yeah, it goes down in a tree high, we in the show, ay. we finna show up. They won't be the boy, oh. they gon' let you pedal. Uh, yeah. Old school, I be like I'm queen, like Rhapsody, see that that's metal. Uh, yeah. uh, super hot, be like I'm fire, I be like tea kettles. Uh, hey. uh, fast and furious, baby like driver, that's pedal to metal. Uh, hey. Hey. Be like a rebel. rebel. Uh, Re- see how I pull up with bikes. Uh, uh. See that they tripping, these niggas be, they think <laughs> they studs. Yeah. Uh, I be in the Stop. cut. Uh. Uh. In the cut. Yeah. In your veins, like mosquitoes, in your blood. In your bacteria, listen. in the gut, and you need some antibiotics. Mm. COVID. And now your body full of toxins. Oh my God. They told you to go vegan, but you didn't. So now you sick in a hospital mm. bed on a septic tank, and your ass under the dirt, six feet under. Oh wow. And now your mama crying, saying, "Why my baby go to that guy somewhere?" Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was, you stopped that. You... <laughs> it got so dark, crazy. but you stopped. I love it. <laughs> um. Welcome back to the Treehouse Show. You just listened to an amazing freestyle by yours truly in the Treehouse Game. I'm your host, Gartasia, and you are tapped into the Trillist Podcast in the fucking universe. You said Trillist. Today, 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 man, we have an amazing panel. We have an amazing podcast coming for you all. We have people from different walks of life. You know what I'm saying? Like, they've actually linked up in the past, so they share a very similar vibration of, (laughs) from my experience, you know, I just met this amazing person right here today, (laughs) but it's a very positive, it's a very optimistic and passionate energy that just resonates from the pores of this individual. You know what I'm saying? And then I just bonded with my brother over here over fucking Lord of the Rings. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I don't wake up, I didn't wake up today, it's like, you know, it's gonna be a, a great day that mm. a brother who look like me is gonna bond over Lord of the Rings. Man. It's not every day. It's not every day you see it. Man. You feel me? So it's like, so off rip, that says everything that I know. Like, this is gonna be a great deep dive because there's nothing I love more than eating vegetables and diving deep with some great thinkers. You know what I'm saying? And today's mm. podcast, we're going to dive deep on two main things that I want to talk about. The first one being how people enter dynamics or relationships from mm-hmm. a transactional standpoint and how mm-hmm. we can learn to avoid that and navigate towards a healthy way of being in a relationship. Also, I do want to touch point on the concept of the psychology behind somebody who might take that route of trying to use people mm-hmm. and abuse people. You know what I'm saying? Like, what does that look like as far mm-hmm. as the parents? What does that look like as far as the friends they keep around? You know what I'm saying? Their circle. So it's gonna be a it's gonna be an interesting podcast. But yeah, man, without further ado, before I keep on running up at the mouth, I'm gonna let these wonderful guests introduce <coughs> themselves. Started with name, fun fact, and age. Okay. You wanna go? Man, <laughs> all right. So, my name King Kwan, K H I N G K W O N. Come on. Fun fact: I'm in this dope ass group called Mastermind. Mm. Gang, gang, gang. Represent. Um, King Kwan is like seven years old. You feel me? Oh my God. <laughs> 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 They you said, said seven or seven D. Seven. Oh, so you childish. Yeah, but you know. I'm screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Glover, not Danny. Oh my gosh. Donald. Big brain. Are y'all going to see him on tour? He's touring? Yeah, he's coming like next month. 
I want to see him do a comedy tour. That's what I miss. I don't want to see him. I seen him. I seen him in 2019 when This America just came out. He was lit. At Lala. Oh my God. I was off Molly too, so can you imagine? I've never done Molly before. Oh, yeah, we finna be cool as so. hell. You, you, you dabble before? I've never done Molly. I've dabbled. I've dabbled. I'm just gonna be safe. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like, I, 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 had, I, had, I, had, I had a moment in time when I was hanging out with my U Chicago friends, bro. We was just. I ain't gonna flesh, but that was some fun ass moments, G. Bro, it was fun. Bro, I'm not gonna G. lie. It's like. I did almost. You know what? Uh, Sidebar, I remember I did my first bump. Bro, I was so scared to do that shit. I was like, I, I'm over here damn near crying. Did you in my see home. New Jack City and shit? No, no, it was like, it was like, cause you know, done a little bump before. Black, right? There's a lot of drug addiction in a black household. Yeah, so when it, when, it, when it's very close to you, you, uh, you feel it way. So when I was trying to do my yeah. first bump, I was over here like, man, I'm crying to my homie. I'm like, man, I don't want me no click like my homie. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's fine. I, like, I don't a- want it to change my life. I did that bitch. I was like, I was like, oh, so I'm straight. Yeah, like, some people, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's over with. It's yeah. definitely oh, a recreational real. joke that a lot of people partake in and that you, you know, it's far more common than what you think. I think that people, when we think about drugs, we think about what I'm we not see in the neighborhood. No, I don't. I just don't want to be Richard Pryor. <laughs> you definitely not promoting the use of drugs, but you know people are grown and they make their own decisions and they go about their own discovery how they feel fit to. Yeah. Me personally, my experience with drugs, I have well, I was raised with a mother who's addicted, so it just definitely changed yeah. my my aspect of it. And yeah. I grew up very judgy. Mm, I used to judge real hard. You tell me you do drug, drug, you did. Actually, I feel like the same way about cigarettes. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like, here's me done everything in the, the world, but a nigga with a Newport. That's just, yeah, oh, I swear. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's like it, it doesn't leave your clothes. Like I remember, I, uh, the I, worst. It stays in your clothes. It's worse than weed. Weed at least has like an aroma. No, that, I fuck with weed. I, I but mind. weed has a, an identity aroma that you can just like. Okay, you can kind of get over it. But cigarettes, yeah, bitch, you choking bro. like. <laughs> All right, Especially wait. Newports. I could like I don't fuck with cigarettes in general, but Newports are the worst. I can't. It's like they Newports all have bad. a smell. But like I, Virginia I Slims, some of them smell minty. Some the of them smell, ones, I don't like them. Some of them. What's your name? Your age and that fun thing about you. <laughs> oh, let's jump back. Who's about to tangent already? Yo, let's put a hey, take a left. <laughs> I'm Kahari. I'm from the west side of Chicago. I'm a singer. Fun fact about me is I am a curator of my own show called Kahari Fridays at Pork Chop Edgewater up north uh-huh. in the uptown community. And I'm 34 years old. I'm happy to be here. It's a blessing. Thank you. I'm happy to have you. Gartasia? This is amazing. I love it. I love it. So, I was at a f- music festival last weekend. Yeah, yeah I, know. Too. I know. I wasn't sure if you like Lord of the Rings, like EDM. Well, I jumped into his story. I was <laughs> like, damn, going? what a rave at. Where are you going? But now I see you, brother. Man. Now I know you Man. get jiggy with that shit. Man. So, I'm screaming. You feel me? North Coast. Oh. They used to be on Norvelly Island. Okay. Damn. That's what I'm saying. I ain't gonna lie. It's never been the same. But, okay. you know, I get the capitalism. They gotta make bread, whatever. I'm screaming. You know what I'm saying? Norvelly Island is its own island. It's a vibe. It really is. It's a vibe. Like, behind the shed aquarium. Yeah, it's like it's like um, Chicago's little, like, bastard child. Yeah. It's, they don't um, promote it. Have you been over there, Kwan? Probably. It's, but like you said, you behind the one, and shit. You take the 146 and it takes you straight over there and you got to walk down like, and it's nothing but water. I'm it's right. the most beach Not them. Oh. looking part of the lake that actually mm-hmm. looks like a beach mm-hmm. on like an ocean. By the shed? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like behind, behind the shed, but it comes it. off like a peninsula mm-hmm. and it looks like you're actually like uh, on, on an island. island. More so than by any other shit. place in Chicago. It's right behind it. It's over by Soldier Field. You can walk. Yeah, oh yeah, well, y'all gotta put me on. I never seen. You can this walk before. so you get off the Roosevelt. It's called 12th Street Reach. 12th Street. And 12th Street. then you you literally walk underneath the bridge, and you can walk past Soldier Field and stuff, and walk like you going towards um, Shed Aquarium, and then you keep walking, and it will have literally guide you right over there. It's its own entity. Y'all been to that dope little isolated park downtown? That's over there by. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, it's by S by uh, what do they call it? They call it the New East Side or something. I know exactly what you're talking Where about. Where is that at, bro? Bro, you checked it out. 
I took, bro. I feel so it's a, no, it's a beautiful. So you literally have to walk like down Randolph, I think, down Randolph or Lake. I don't know. I, I, I just, I just Randolph know how to get lake? there. It's by the Lake Shore Sport and Fitness. You got to walk down some deep, steep ass stairs bro, to it's get there, super bro. Low key. Yo, it's, it's like Narnia, bro. Gee, we and you to, walk, you walk it in there. You like, you walk, you see, like, yo, what is this park? There's trees, and it's like, it's pretty. Yo, yes, yo, bro. Yo. Bro, I literally it's just like water fountains everywhere and shit. I can't make this shit up. I literally just told a couple. It was I was I know I didn't tell you and Asha, but I literally told a couple last week mm. who's on a podcast. She came with her boyfriend and then they were like they trying to just I literally recommended them to go there. Yeah. It's and very that's crazy. Serene. You just you that's crazy mix. So it is secretive, bro. It's yeah. low key. Yeah, it's very serene. It's like I wanna go uh, there for a photo shoot. Escape when I was skateboarding heavy, I discovered it. I forgot how I found out about it, but I Every since I found out about it, I would go there, especially when it's warm outside, sit, especially at night, and just like relax on, on the bench and just like listen to the water trickle. And mm. I would just like just fade for a while. It's a vibe, bro. It's a vibe, bro. Anywho, yeah, so we was at this music festival. <laughs> Man, tap right. in. You, you won't regret it. It's, it's really, it's really like that. But anyway, I'm having fun at this festival. And I'm kind of like the type where like I like to dance, mm-hmm. but also like moments of silence. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I like moments where we could talk and actually communicate. Cause like mm, yeah. I don't be doing drugs and shit no more. Same. Yeah. Literally the same. Yeah, I, literally I went the same. A phase. I went hard as fuck, but like since like 2020, I just lost all. Bro, I rarely drink too, so I, 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 I'm same. I don't drink. I'm like, like, so I just like. So I be in that bitch. Oh, you know what I'm right. saying? Right, but I you still drinking like I be turned though. So, but the problem, I don't, I'm not gonna say the problem with being sober, but when, a lot of times when you're sober in a place, let's be real, a music festival, most people not sober. Yeah. So what happens is like, they just be entertained from the drugs, but when you sober, you gotta like, commune, you gotta talk to people, you actually gotta try to have fun. Like you can't just, you can't just be lit, just like, if it's nothing going on when you're sober, unless you meditate it. So you don't think, so you don't think that, with, with that, when you say that, I think that because as a person who is of sobriety standstill mm-hmm. or whatever, like I, I just started dabbling in um, shrooms <clears throat> recently. My boyfriend, hey. my boyfriend um, introduced me to that. Mm-hmm. I always want to try. Hold <laughs> oh, that thought right there. I'm You're bad influence on your boy. <laughs> Let me introduce you to something, baby. <laughs> Come on, it you it. It's not. It's not. It's but I, it don't do it for me. It's not my vibe. Hold that thought though, because I do want to come back to all that, right? But coming back to the story, right? So I'm vibing out. And then I, I came with some friends, and she's not from here. She's from like out of town, like West Coast and shit. Okay. But she told me how like she has a lot of friends who are international, <clears throat> so they're not natively American. They don't have the passport. They don't have all the shit that we have, social security number. But basically, like they have to use like student visas to stay, or like they have to oh. finesse the system to stay in the country. Otherwise, they get you know kicked out and shit. Right. Oh. And she was telling me how like she has a bunch of friends, and. One of her friends, like they ended up marrying an American, not out of love, right? But just like for that, that green, green card, yeah. yeah. But then it ended up being a trap. That's a transaction. A trap. Not a trap, but like, like he didn't know. He thought it was love, I guess. Ooh. I know, I know, I know. So she kind of finessed him, so it backfired. Damn, I don't know. Sweetie. I don't know the details. Oh, I, I, he never no. found out directly that she was using for the green card, but it kind of came out. You know, the, the love wasn't there, so he That's figured it out. That's very common. I probably saw, right? And then what happened Damn, was she must have he ended up like being abusive and shit. So it ended up being some get out shit. Oh, Long story short, it ended up being fucked up. Like she got she did get her green card, but at what cost? Was this person of African ancestors? No. Damn. That do happen a lot though. Well you have African to drop that on the podcast, bro. Yeah, I try to be I, I, I try to be specific. You right, Nick. <laughs> She's trying to get the tea. <laughs> Like, no, because the. Say, what African, color was it? Do. No, that's why I agree with you. That's a very. It's very common. So I use that. The only reason I use that scenario is because it's top of mind, but I have a lot of scenarios in the back pocket of Africans doing the same thing. Yes. But, um, oh, it's so oh, fun common. I'll tell you something. No, for sure. I had a, I had a friend who actually Hold did on, something let, in New York. Let me hit the hook real quick. So, so my question to you all is like, what do you all think about that scenario? Like, this person is coming from a different country. It is kind of survival mode for them. So it's like, maybe back in their country, it's a <clears> war. <throat> or maybe back in their country, it's like some communist shit where they can't even speak. You know what I'm saying? Or it's right. like some feminist, anti-feminist shit. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my Muslim brothers. They're not all on that. But like, in you know, certain places in the world, women can't drive and shit like that. So like, so they're going back to some a place that's not good. So it's like, do you think that justifies the means to like, kind of being in a, in a marriage with somebody for the green card. And it's not it's not that she just 
didn't show him any love, but it just, it was more so green card based. What do you all think about that? Um, are you familiar with the TLC show that's called 90 Day Fiance? I heard of that. That's literally what you're talking about. Mm. It's where these men order these male order brides. They're coming from different parts of the country. Um, Botswana, they're coming from Africa. They're coming from China. They're coming from Thailand, from the Philippines. By any means necessary, they're meeting these men that are not necessarily the most attractive. And then they're coming here under the guise of love. (coughs) And, you know, but that's a reality that is faced amongst a lot of people. And women do it, or you know, men do it. It's very marriage is a tr- contract, really. Marriage is a business. Once you get married to somebody, like <laughs> the terms and agreements is something that you, the two people discuss. So, but under that, what you discussed and displayed so effortlessly, that's a trap. That is not love. That is not conducive or healthy. But that person must be truly desperate and I feel bad like yeah. that breaks my heart to know that, that there's people out here that really are preying on the kindness of your generosity of your heart to kind of trap your ass and to get stay here it's yeah. sad it's I feel bad for her whoever yeah. she is <clears throat> so do you think and I'm not justifying the abuse but do you, how, how would you handle that situation I it, wouldn't because I wouldn't be married to no I wouldn't be married to nobody that's not of this nationality oh wow I like Americans interesting I like black Americans so you would have dated African no what, what what's your uh, view on that I'm not from that country I, I, what are they in, in, in my in my in my World where I'm at, we are in Chicago, Illinois. I grew up from Chicago. <clears throat> I've had different experiences in this region. <laughs> I wouldn't be connected to anybody that's African. That's not something that I will be desperately seeking or I'm on a hunt. That that's a sense of fetishism. Am I going? Am I crazy? Like you're on the hunt for something exotic or mm-hmm. something otherworldly other than what's no, presented I mean, in front of you. If you're open to other things, you're open. Oh, you to other said, things. is that wrong to not? Seek exotic <clears throat> shit. I wouldn't be looking for an African man. Go. I like black men. I like Americans. Mm-hmm. I like them chocolate. I mean, there's a lot of that in Africa, <laughs> but it's different shades. Yeah. But... I mean, it's mostly that. But he like he like the milk chocolate, I guess. Yeah. It's like the okay, milk chocolate. chocolate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you look for chocolate, definitely brown skin. Brown that's African skin. Bone. That's interesting. What about you, uh, King Kwan? All right, go over the first the que- question. So yeah, um, go over the question again because I kind of got lost in translation. I know, I know, we be tangenting, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. Run about and get used to that. But yeah, I was, the question was basically I was at this rave with my friend, and she told me that her friend in L.A. got with some dude, right? I got basically that. to get a green card. So my question was, yeah. you know, based on her situation, maybe it was fucked up in her right, own right, country. Right. My question to you is like, do you think that justifies <clears throat> the means of just getting with a dude? It wasn't a hundred percent. Maybe it was like twenty percent love. Eighty because she, she didn't just get with any old body. Uh, it was like you know he's the best. Justify what happened. Oh, yeah. What she did. But um, do you think? But do you think it was still justified? Like the bigger motive being the green card. It was under and, the guise of love, right. but he yeah. finessed her and utilized and gained citizenship. It was she actually. She but finessed she him. finessed yeah. him. That makes it even more worse. But see, then we talk about we, we, make, take, we, take, we take we take we talk about we talk about men and how men do things like. Um, men date younger women for instance or you know it's seen it to be predatory but when women do it it's like women out here just they doing the same thing so she, shame on her you know yeah, it's, it's predatory that's the word it is predatory so I'm gonna say she is justified interesting let's hear it she human mm. they're gonna do whatever they wanna do so and that and that and that, and that meaning she's she, justified she, in what doing what um lying betraying this guy um, not saying it's a good thing to do, but what when you are in a moment of desperation, depending on how strong your survival mode is, you're going to do anything um, that you need to get yourself out of the situation that you deemed as worse. At the That's expense why people, of somebody else, though? Exactly. Are we giving people grace to be I'm not giving dishonest? anybody grace. I'm are we just giving telling people you, grace to be that desperate to ruin... You know... You don't know what that person went through or how the, the person who got finished. Yeah, like how it affected their life. It, it, mm-hmm. it that you 
dealing with money. Like people die for much less. Right. That's, that's a situation that you can't really. It's much bigger than just you know. Oh, I'm gaining citizenship, and you know your finances are involved. There's annulments that need to be done. There are papers, <clears throat> paperwork. There's lawyers. That's not something to be taken lightly of. Absolutely. So, but what I'm saying is that people are going to do what they are going to do when they feel justified in the means. You have drug dealers out here who sell poison to the community and they don't give two fucks about if your ass die, become a cluck on the street, or go to rehab and your life suffers. They are they are in their own survival mode, they hustle to move on. Now, that's just a part of the world. Now, am I saying she's bad for that? Yes, there's a morality about that, but the fact is, she got what she needed, she got her results, and now she has to deal with the consequences mm -hmm. of her actions. That's the facts. But, you know, am I am I saying, like, well, oh, she shouldn't have did that? Look, like, I can't tell, you can't tell nobody what the hell they're going to do. They're like, they are going to do what they want. And that's just how the world is. Now, we have people out here who, who do move um, justly and, um, and have a moral compass. And... And that is fine and dandy as well. But the person who needs to get out of their situation, there's no telling what they'll do in order to get what they want. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just the facts. I'm sorry that she went through the other abuse and on the other on the other guy's end, he needs to have more discernment to find, figure out like mm -hmm. how the hell you get duped like that. First and foremost, how you get duped like you that? Don't know, but we don't you also me? we don't know the context in which the we don't the, know. the method of um, courtship that happened you know we don't know if this was like was this like a yearly thing did she work on this for like a year was this a was this a mark were you a mark like I, I didn't that I is found, true did I study did I study this man did I you know did I make you fall in love with me like right. how deep now, was that situation now let me ask her? this question Cartesia did the person she married did did what did her friend give any details about the person she married? Yeah, she did. She did get some details. Uh, she said he was like kind of an alcoholic. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so this is a dude probably not even in his in a sound mind. He was an alcoholic. He struggled with um, like he basically hated his job. So he yeah, would this this is I'm not saying this person was a uh, uh, goofy, but he was mad vulnerable, mm. mad vulnerable, and she. I don't know if she knew that, but she most definitely knew how to get in that motherfucker. Yeah, she she probably yeah. She married she, an she alcoholic. Finessed, Come on, she, fin like, she finessed stop, them. Stop. Yeah, like, that was some that was some studying going on. In I'm, not situation. Finna, I'm not gonna give you no crocodile but tears for that. I'm like, not gonna justify it either. I'm not gonna praise not somebody who's gonna be you know what she did was foul. But she an American now, so. Welcome I mean, to the USA. Yeah, yeah, she, she got what she needed, but right she, I mean, it came with some Welcome consequences. To the USA, young so, lady. Yeah. Just no, know, like, America. your actions have consequences. If you choose to do something um, that will cost another person's mental sanity or safety, there's gonna be there's gonna be some kind of backlash. Yes, you are able. We have the freedom and the will to do everything that you want in your head. I could throw this glass at the at the window right now, but there will be some consequences at it. Do you believe in freedom of consequences? Freedom of consequences. Like you, you're free to do what you want, but do you? Agree that uh, you're free to get what what happened. Oh, hell of course, yeah. hell of yeah. Course. What? If I go downstairs and spit on the man's what, face and he get the swinging on me, then I understand like, okay, people, we gonna fight this dude. You people, feel me? In that, there are some people because I feel like this. I think that we can all kind of relate to this a little bit in doing what we do. Like, I kind of feel like there are people who get away with things who do things or they get opportunities and it's like why not me you see them doing things or how how they go about it might not be right it might not be like you said it might not be on the moral compass of right <coughs> driving a force of good or anything but they get rewarded anyway right that's not my journey to kind of challenge that i'm a i consider myself a law abiding citizen have i cut the corners on some things i'm not perfect yeah but Anytime I try to do something foul, a shady, because that's not my heart and that's not genetically how I was set up, you know, my spirituality, I will always take the high road. I will I'm playing them up. You know, that's I just operate on a different frequency. Anytime I try to do something low, brow, dirty, in the gutter, it's always come back on me. Mm. For sure. So You can't escape the consequences. That's my message from God, like Nah, uh, you ain't built. You ain't built like that. So, I might see somebody else winning. That's over here. They scamming. They doing things improper. 
they went in, but that's their journey. They can get away with it. That's not my my journey, and that's not my reward. And I'll get it some, some other way. Look, some people look like they be getting away with it. They, they do. look. There's always a look. There's always a look to it. You know what I'm saying? But they also live. Damn. Looking over their shoulder. Yeah. You I gotta watch. Change the numbers every two weeks. Man. Change your number like change your drawers. <clears throat> Can't get in contact with them for nothing. They gotta be seen at this time. Can't be seen at that time. Hey, Stressful. check this out. So you say that people who look like they get away with things, but understand they some they know that when they're doing wrong. Um, you would think they do, but those people who understand there's the consequences, even if they do dirt. They're still looking behind their back. Yeah. They still Absolutely. they still know like, oh shit. How somebody could get big somebody could get at me. So yeah, they from the outside in look like, oh, they got away with it. So this person probably paranoid fear. as hell. Probably ain't got no people in that corner. Probably thinking the ones who are or, who are in their circle maybe out to get them or something. You know, it's how many even enjoy it. Exactly. There's exactly. a sense of fear instilled in that success. There's a sense of isolation because you don't you not sharing it with everybody, whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's money or you got an opportunity doing something. You not you can't share that with everybody. You can't be truly happy. You might it, it might provide a sense of temporary relief, but baby, Miss Karma, <laughs> yeah, as above, so below. Mm. Yeah, no, that's 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 really powerful. I bring up this conversation because I feel like with 2024, there's so much, there's so much one-sided. <clears throat> how can I put this? People have unfounded entitlement. Mm. Oh, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Feel let's, like, let's do it again, Quan. <clears throat> Oh, I fucked it up. <laughs> hey, well, you, was, you, was, you, was, you was you on was church. You was in church with Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I did a church. Good, a good old, good old nasty Baptist. I did okay. it. Nah, we was doing a, we was doing a, the, the fake walk yeah. in. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. My mom said something deep like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but, um, you know, the one side of entitlement. That's I think that's what I said. It. Yeah, what do y'all think about that? Because I feel like this Explain ties that. into that. So to me, the one-sided entitlement is like, I'm going to get mine by any means. And if it means fucking X, Y, and Z, a whole alphabet over to get what I want, then it's justified because I'm him, I'm her, I'm a badass bitch, I'm, I'm, a, I'm so-and-so, you feel me? I got it out my own two, two toes, ten toes, two toes, that's, that's a bigger issue, but ten toes. Ten toes. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, wait. Jeremy, you, you have two big toes. Sometimes I think of toe, I just think of the big toe. But uh, the little ones are toes, too. Phalanges. Yeah, them. toe phalanges. They're all phalanges. Yeah. Hold on. Wait, wait. Before you talk about toes, wait. I'm going to go back to what you said, what we said about the last girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's going to be some shit that come with what she just did. Right. 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 The cost of freedom of consequences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in her case, he put some hands on her. Mm. Which is out after he found out that this was the ultimate agenda. Mm. Oh, after this, he found out, that's when this he, was this. A, was she this? never, of course, disclosed it. Like, oh, okay. she never it was real to him. But just right. through her actions, like she was like staying out late. She was not like you know being there for him. So he just mm. was drunk and just like didn't have not control his emotions. And then one day they had a fight, and then he put hands on her. Damn. That's what that was the story she told okay. me. Yeah, that's terrible. That's yeah. terrible. But it was a result yeah, of like you know that's what happens when you don't. You marry someone you don't really fuck with, like yeah. Yeah. you don't know. First of all, you know he probably had his shared back of problems too. But <clears throat> you, when you marry somebody, it's a contract. Like you've kind of marriage is a business. It's a business, right? But like the entitlement thing, like what do you all think about that? This era of entitlement, and I'm just leave it at that. Like, what do y'all think about that? You want my first get what I want, despite whatever. I mean, I I'm gonna just say it go with and like. <laughs> The, well, she was definitely the, entitled. The entitlement. So when you say that, with the with yeah. the with the with the entitlement aspect, when I think of entitled, I'm a, I'm gonna still go answer your question. When I think of entitled. I think of people how this those kind of people may have may believe that their actions won't come with consequences, um, and they they are they are um, invulnerable to certain um, to certain things. Um, 
I think that mentality is sad uh, to think that way, to think that you're going to get what you want by any means necessary because um, that idea of many by any means necessary in, in a certain regard means that you're going to hurt, um, destroy, or move anything out your way. Like, may, damn, they might be a shark, be a snake when no one is around you. And, I, and I've seen many of people like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I've seen people who sell them, who sell their bodies for their own gain, for um, and there is no one in their corner. And if they are, these, these are other selfish people who, who are willing to take um, in order to get what they want. And they may take from them just to get what they want. So the betrayal is always there. There's an isolation, there's a loneliness. This shit is sad, son. Like, like, what do you think about society? kind of making that normal like i feel like in the rap we see that i feel like television on media we see like on tiktok like oh like yeah i finesse this dude or like oh yeah like this relationship this or like people will like it'll be a nice guy or it'll be a nice girl just actually giving him a genuine compliment or treating him with love and then that'd be I'll like check this out period, bro. Boo, like well, let me i already me. know i'm that like fuck you like them cats they're gonna stay lonely yeah they're gonna stay lonely they're gonna they're gonna walk into they're gonna walk into the real world outside of the phone screen and entertain other people. Or they're gonna find out. Look, man, they're gonna hate me for this, but they're gonna be the Kevin Samuels example. 40, 50 some years old, well, along with a cat. Who? The people who think like that. Oh, I finesse this nigga for this and this. Like, yo, that's gonna be it. Or you find somebody, you find a, you, shit, luck, hopefully you find a simp or something like that. I'm screaming. But people, it, or even a guy should do something like that. You're not gonna find a wholesome woman um, with, with, with a mentality. Uh, like that, you're gonna get what you want of trying to finesse some woman. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you can't operate like that on you can't operate that you can't operate like that with longevity. That is a short sighted mindset. Mm-hmm. It's not sustainable. Yeah. It's not sustainable. So let's look at the word entitlement while we're you know, I like this okay, version of uh, the definition. The unjustified assumption that one has a certain right to advantages, pre- preferential treatment, etc. I think that word Karen. that you're looking for is specifically with that description that you gave is somebody who's an opportunist. Mm. Someone who's going to get it by any means necessary. They don't care who they hurt. You know, opportunistic can be is, ne- is seen as a, ne- a negative connotation for some people. Uh-huh. It also can be um, a good situation. You know, oh, somebody out here, oh, they, they looking Let's for shit. definition. Hold on. For instance, oh, somebody on the corner, and I'm like, oh, I'm looking for openers for somebody, da, 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 da. I'm at the right place at the right time. I'm going to seize the opportunity to go talk to this guy to secure my spot. But the negative connotation is I'm going to pepper spray this bitch over here. I'm going to pepper spray. <laughs> I'm going to knock this person up. I'm going to, you know, like, <laughs> I'm trying to, he my competition, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. Oh, I'm going to call, let me text this girl. I'm like, oh, something happened. You know, like, setting up a scenario for destruction, to halt somebody's bag, to stop somebody from yeah. seizing an opportunity that can be just as talented as you are because of fear. You're intimidated by that person. You know, like, that's opportunistic. Yeah. That is an opportunity. You, you look at somebody, entitlement is like you feel righteous to something. You feel so entitled. <laughs> You feel like it should be yours. And what is the other, the that act is, of giving or the state of, yours. the state of having a, a title or, or right or claim to something. You feel like it should be yours. Nobody is entitled to anything. You have, a lot of people feel entitled. I felt entitled at one point in time. I felt like I should have been bigger than what I was. I, I can sing. I can sing better than, I can sing some of these bitches under the table, but she getting an opportunity. She crewing two notes. <clears throat> But you don't know what she's done or the work that she's put into to secure that situation. You don't know. So you can't necessarily look at other people's journey and compare it to yours because what's for you is for you. I've been blessed. I've been through so much trauma dealing with music and being an independent artist that it's just like so numb, you know. But now after two years, I'm like in therapy and everything, I've kind of healed from those wounds. A little bit, they're scars. They're reminders of things that happened in the past. But divine timing happens. Now I have my own residency. 
I opened up at the 1865 Fest this past summer. Um, yes. Opening for Shauna in Crucial Conflict. Do you feel entitled for your residency? No, I think that it was an <laughs> opportunity that was given to me. It was an opportunity that was given to me, rightfully so. You know, because the success of something that was serendipitous um, on my standpoint, I didn't expect that many people to show up. Oh. I wanted people to show up. Of course, we want people to celebrate us and to see us at That's our best real. and to be pursuing something. As you know, you're an artist as well. You want people to show up at your show. It makes you feel good. It validates the experience and it prolongs you to go a little bit harder Hard, at it. Yeah. Without support, you have nothing. Mm. You know. Um, I don't feel entitled to anything because I never want to get too excited about myself because this could be gone tomorrow. And and you bring such an interesting point up because I feel like a lot of like since the sp I don't know when it started, but like the woke movement, I guess since like it got really heavy, like during COVID, but it's really been like hippies and shit. But like the people just went crazy with the woke shit on TikTok, which is, I feel like there's good elements to it, like affirmations, like Demer. meditation, like mindfulness. <laughs> I'm so tired of that word. Like, oh my God. Please, Demur. I'm tired of what, all the, the, the is, Hell no. Demurity is my Demure purity. Bitch, you are not shy. There's nothing withdrawn or modest about you. You are very loud, very ghetto, very rambunctious. Stop it. Too. Um. She said, I had to get my shit off. Stop. <laughs> Nobody. Demure. Cutesy. Very cutesy. You're ugly. Your attitude ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Especially you out here doing people wrong. And you feel entitled to the situations, you're not working, you don't know what people have gone through. You know, it's not your time yet. And when God sees fit, you know, you have a tribe, you have you have to assemble things in a manner that makes sense. You know, it takes time. I'm 34 years old. I'm nowhere near to where I think I should be. I look at other people, I look at my peers, and they tell me things, I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to get to the next level. You know, like, there's always, levels to to achieve new levels new opportunities you know you just i don't believe in operating in that manner of like oh i gotta stop i gotta stop you from doing your things like or i'm coming up with um, um urban lux cafe trying to take over or i gotta beat my chest and i gotta show i feel like i need to be here like it's not gonna work like that i think going off that there's a there's some entitlement that's good because it gives you higher self-esteem, gives you a boost of confidence. Like, I'm entitled in the sense of like, I'm a motherfucking MC, and when I'm at that show, I know I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. Like, I know the stage is mine. It's my world. When I step on this bitch, it's mine. I'm gonna do this shit. I do this. You feel me? Like, That's confidence, this, though. No, but there's still an entitlement, because it's my right to, is is my, look, honestly, look, I feel like hip hop is a, is a uh, hip hop is a, no, 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 let me finish. Uh, hip hop is my right to hold, to mm. attain. You feel me? I got forefathers. Okay. We got forefathers of hip hop. And I feel like it is for us. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, don't get me wrong, other ethnicities step in and, they, and they, they kill that shit. But I feel like hip hop is straight. You can't tell me hip hop ain't ain't for blacks. You can't tell me that. You know, if you feel me, you like, hey, I don't care what you say. You could say you could drop Eminem. You could drop all these other people who do dope stuff. That's cool. It ain't gonna change my entitlement for what I feel what hip hop is. Mm. You know. I feel like I feel like what you saying though, it is entitlement, but I don't feel like. Remember how you said there's a healthy part of um opportunistic and there's mm -hmm. an unhealthy part mm -hmm. i feel like there's a healthy part of entitlement and there's an unhealthy part of entitlement mm -hmm. i feel like it becomes unhealthy when you cast that entitlement outside of your area of control right you start saying i, I, I was going out and saying and like the same for you mom like, yeah when it yeah. becomes arrogant when it yeah. becomes vile when it becomes toxic mm -hmm. when it becomes like you feel like you got to stop somebody else from achieving a certain stature you don't want to see nobody else to shine like that is dangerous that is very dangerous and a lot of people i i was it's funny that we're talking about this because i was i was talking to, i was watching someone's live or insta story and they were talking about oh everybody want to hang out and stuff if it's not about the money versus yeah. referencing what you're talking about if it's not about the money or 
I'm trying to be famous or uh, like to me that's an ugly characteristic it's very dangerous mm. to think that there's nothing wrong with having ambitions I'm not downing anybody for being ambitious or wanting to rise to a certain level if that's your focus but you never want to ruin people of value my one of my favorite singers Monica said don't ruin people of value don't get so caught up that you miss the bigger picture of the mission because you chasing after this bag or you chasing after this thing and you you know sideline people if I was to side oh, I don't need treehouse I don't need it uh, uh. it's a partnership it's a it's a branding deal it's a it's an association it's a business relationship everything is transactional you know and there's good transactions and there's bad transactions. I feel like a bad transaction is a robbery, though. Mm, emotional, mental, mm. financial. In all arenas. I feel like a transaction implies... That's why, like, after you make a transaction, you shake your hand because both people think that they, they won. My grandma used to say, fair exchange ain't no robbery. Ooh, she used to tell I me I never that. thought about that with the You think about it? Hands. That was an after agreement. After a business yes. deal, yeah. people, all, both parties shake hands. You mm -hmm. don't shake hands with someone who finessed you. Right. You spit on you spitting on his feet. You better take yeah. it. You I saw that. I saw I saw that on Insta story. They talk there was a woman talking about, you know, um antiquated gestures like when you cheers to someone, they cheers to make sure that their their liquor spills over into the other one just in case if they thought that you poisoned them. What? Mm-hmm. It's a I I'll, I'll have to I have to share with you. Like so when you cheers, like oh, get your fucking mug away from my shit. <laughs> like they, that's why they be like, cheers, you know, like back. they can <laughs> say um they can no, say I want to cheer rude. though, because in case yeah. you spike my but shit. They they, they talked about that. <laughs> you, 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 shake hands, hands. Too, you shake hands in shit. an agreement upon something because Here's your roofie. you you want right. to we both sure. we both yeah. gonna be in that club. <laughs> <laughs> we both gonna be in that bitch foaming at the mouth. Oh, right. What you talking about? <laughs> oh, oh, so now you don't want that margarita. Oh, I, no. You were just hyping me up about that drink, right. but you don't want to take a sip. I'll sip Yo. with you. And that's why they say Yo. cheers. Like they say, we say cheers, you know. So, yeah. But it was some, we say it in a celebra celebratory. In you the know what's crazy though? Uh, yeah. In French, cheers is santé, mm -hmm. santé, and you make eye contact, right? Mm -hmm. And then santé means health. And you're making eye contact with that person because you're wishing them health. But that makes sense. It's like if they root for you, they don't wish you health. So it's all tying together. So if they don't mm, cheers, you cool. know something is up with the big brain with the, with the situation. Yeah, that was um that was over in Japan, I believe. I have to send. Have you to been Japan? Me. No. Oh. No. Yeah, that's my next destination. List. I'm, I'm, hey, not, I'm not international. I have I have it on my uh, just, goal list on my board at the crib. Japan. I still have to conquer this region before I go international. I Baby respect steps. that though. Like you know who you are. You know what what you. Call. A lot yeah. of people don't know who they are, and then they spend their whole life trying to be somebody else. Yeah, mm. and it's you know, facade. And uh, uh, funny that you mentioned that. A sense of unhappiness. Like you cannot. I don't see how people do it. Like do what? what? Fake themselves. Fake the funk. Like be. To present yourself, that has to be exhausting. I couldn't keep up. I can't even remember what I wore yesterday, let alone the personality I was wearing. Like, but it must have been something fly. It was. No, I was in my drawers and. <laughs> well. In my watching Power Rangers, like. Oh, okay. some right. people. Turbo. Some people do take the idea of fake it till you make it to heart. Now, <laughs> with. Good, now, good fake it till you make it or bad fake it till you make it. Are so, we stealing things the from out of the so, store? No, Fake no, it, no. Make it, bitch. no. I'm t I'm mm. so I'm talking about when it comes to having aspirations, having the tenacity and the discipline to continue to arduously push towards your goals uh, without allowing anything to stop you. Mm. Now, if you're a lazy, that's good. Fake it, you make it right. Now, if you're a lazy person saying, "Oh, I'm gonna be, oh, I'm gonna be a star or whatever," and then you don't grind, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. You don't whatever your stars um aspirations are you don't even take the small steps to get there um daily um uh, then then yes you are delusional then you are being the um what'd you say opportunistic no 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 the imposter fake. syndrome Imposter yeah. but you said another word. You said the fake something, the fake. Fake it till you make it. Or the good what? fake till you make it, the bad fake till you make it. Yeah, the bad, the, you're the bad doing the fake fake it fake till you make it. Till you make it. So, you know what I'm saying? What's the like, bad fake it till you make the it? The bad fake it till you make it is. <laughs> it's just slimy. It's stealing. It's cutthroat. Ain't no, I don't think 
you know, instead of like this- lowering the budget or finding what corners or using your resources, you doing shit underheaded. That's just janky. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's just being thank janky. you, brother. Like, thank you. You know, you know. We all yeah. have surrounded ourselves or been been witness to people who been on both sides. Like, oh, I'm we making makeshift things like um my one of my peers and my friend, her <laughs> name is Javon moves. Landry. She told me to <laughs> um Jamal Landry, yeah, shout out yeah. Jamal Landry. Sh- shout out to you, babe. So I miss you. Um, Sh- sorry to interrupt. Sh- shout out Jamal Landry, man. She's amazing. I'm not gonna lie. She was on the podcast like two years ago. She's one of the first guests I had, mm-hmm. and she was like making beats, yeah, she's rapping, still, hey. doing her thing. Like, she's still doing. Her and thing. To, this, to this day, she's still doing it. She's yeah. like, so I just I just admire anybody who says they're gonna do something and they fucking do that shit at the highest level and I see her growth and I know as long as she continues she's gonna fucking take this shit over like the type of dedication that I've seen it's, it's over inspirational with. it's so inspirational she makes me feel like I'm not doing enough you need people around you that make you that kind of want to make you want to up your game a little bit more but say how you said it before she that make you feel like you're not doing enough yeah like yeah in a good way in a motivational way but what I was about to say was we were having a conversation about Oh my God! I just lo- fake, fake, fake to make it good and fake to make it bad. Yeah, um, I just realized you got money, Jordan, on this bitch right here. Man, come on, <laughs> legendary interview. You go amazing. watch that interview. It was amazing. Money, yeah, that's my brother. He two is. years ago, long bro. That was almost two years ago, man. Mm. My fault. One of the OGs. I, I, I lost my now. mind. I lost my train of thought okay. that quick. <laughs> <laughs> it, was it was getting so good. It's like my, my mind fault. was just like. Let's really come back to the entitlement and then let's let this naturally. When you don't think about it, it'll come back. Yeah. Um. Speaking of this entitlement, man, I see this entitlement like in our scene, like the art scene. I be seeing it. Like, like I get it. Like you've been out here grinding. You know what I'm saying? And it's like it's only you would know how much work you put into it. So who are we to tell you you didn't you didn't put in that much work? So Facts. yeah, like say it with your chest. You work for this. Like I get it, right? But I, I'm starting to see a trend. I ain't gonna call nobody out, but like I be seeing on my stories. I just be seeing people post it. Like people will post a venue and then they'll post like. Oh, nobody came out to my, um, you know, my body painting show, or oh, damn, nobody came out to my comedy <laughs> show. And then, 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 in that same, like, it'll be like a paragraph on on the story, like a whole fucking ten snaps with like ten paragraphs of like yeah. the system. It's the man. The, like nobody came to my show. Like, people, artists should be like, we we should have a dedicated. We shouldn't have to pay this, or we shouldn't have to pay for venues. And it's like I get it, I get it, but it's it's coming off very much so like. It's, it's hard, hard in this bitch. It's it's hard. Yeah. Like it shit ain't easy. Like like it's people who had all the obstacles that you had and still did it. Just the fact to be able to pull in bodies for your event, it's not easy. You have and to, I get it's frustrating. I get it's frustrating. You have to tell somebody someone's schedule. You have to physically stop somebody. Yo, don't go there. Come here. Come out of your house. Come to my event because my event is gonna be the thing. Be mad that and people that show a, up. That is a skill. Support artists like they're going on rants and stuff, and I'm just yeah. like, I know what I was about to say now. Basically, to inter- and I'm gonna interwave yeah. it into that. Jovan was basically telling me to make shift. You can do things on a budget. You can do things. Become self sufficient. Self sufficiency is key. I was paying people to do my flyers. I was paying people to do my flyers. And then I'm complaining, I'm talking in confidence. You, girl, this is weighing me down. I gotta go. I'm starving over here. Like, I got the money to do this. Da, 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 da. The show is costing me this. Da, da, da. She's like, you can cut corners by doing things on your own. Yeah. That's fake it till you make it the right way. You know, I'm not, you know, or not trying to finesse nobody or I'm not paying people out or anything like mm-hmm. that. But to break, to talk about what you're talking about, because mm-hmm. I see that as well. On my yeah. page, I'm sure our feats look completely different, but we also have mutuals. But this specific <coughs> person is talking about don't nobody come support them. I'm not, I'm yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say, gonna say, gonna say I know. Say I, I, I don't want to say. Um, names. I'm I don't not look say at stories long like, enough to know who it is. It's, it's a lot of people that are like that. <laughs> it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Lot of people. Ain't nobody it. come support me. I sung to. I sung to couches. I've sung to rats. <laughs> Roaches, <laughs> the fuck? bartenders, oh, some Snow White shit. Uh, Turn off some What's Fiona was singing like, to the bird? You know, did it explode? The show must go on. <laughs> it's it's a methodology to it. Promotion is a big key. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody 
you have to people have to buy into what you're selling if they don't feel connected to it if they don't feel like you're talented or it could be a, it's a different variation of different things yeah. we're not going to sit up here and act like everybody deserves to be on a stage because a lot of these people <coughs> they're not pushing their pins it's a lot of these people mumble rappers that can't rap you know <laughs> You know, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of whispers. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, those whispers be going hard, though. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, I, I remember the Ying Yang twins. Remember the Ying Yang twins? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, like, this new about... wave of hip hop. Uh, it's like, it's taking me a long time to get into it, but it, it do be hitting, though. Like these whisper nah. rappers and like. But that doesn't mean it's a minute. But you know what? I'm not gonna sit up here. The, the game has changed. The term of talent has changed. But I'm not gonna sit up here and hate on that person because it's not for. It's not my journey. Like I believe what's divinely mine will come for me and it will. I will grow with it. I will flourish. I feel like my moment for y this year, you mentioned this year, um, being very monumentous for me. I did something that was on my bucket list and it, it surpassed my wildest imagined. Um, no imagination. Mistake. Which was the residency. My That's very first beautiful. show, I sold over 62 tickets. That's amazing. And um, it was at a spot that it was on a, it was on a Thursday night. Mm. It was on a Thursday night, two days after my birthday. And... Mm. Um, people showed up. I was floored. I was happy. I was like, listen, I told my openers, I said, if y'all can just get five people, if we can just get five, I just want maybe 20 people in the audience. I don't want, you know, but 60 something people and everybody's showing love. My peers, Ken was there. A lot of Jovan was there. A lot of our peers that were there. Um, it's a wonderful thing, but like, I just can't, I can't. I, <clears throat> I can't. It's for you. What's for you can be taken from you. You know Jesus. what I'm saying? That's you about God. to stress me out. Like, you about to stress me out talking about it because it's like, how are you going to hate on someone else's journey? You don't know. But they you weren't hate. It wasn't hating we're talking about. They were just talking about like the, complaining the, the entitlement about it. Of it right? You, you, you got, feel you entitled? You got to sit back where you, where you were, keep quiet because you won't be a friend. Oh, my fault. My fault. You my fault. Gonna, you gonna, you feel entitled. Am so I much. good? I'm good right here. Right you feel fault, so entitled fault. to the fact that you think that you, you deserve to be seen or you deserve, and don't. It might be a, a different variable. Maybe you should try a different approach. I text people personally. I I was showing. I was hitting people up in the inbox. Daily reminders. I posted. Um, Jovan told me about the importance of um, utilizing boost posts and sponsor sponsoring your um, ads on freaking Instagram. Instagram goes into <laughs> Instagram goes into Facebook and then pe if people literally see that, they'll see your ad or your flyer or whatever. The spot you know, when we click on stories and it goes over to a flyer. Yeah. That I had literally had like three or four people come up to me after my show that they was like, oh my god, your show was your show was today. Oh my god, I'm gonna come to the next one. You know, like mm. That stuff works. Visibility matters. Yeah. As much as I can't stand TikTok, TikTok is the new MySpace. TikTok mm. is the new, you know, it's a visual um, interpretation of your art, whether you are sharing news, whether you are a comedian, whether you're doing little clips. It's almost like an, a long version of Vine because it's crazy. Like mm, NPC streaming. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, this interesting thing is like another thing people need to realize is that like, a lot of times, the reason why people aren't supporting you or they're not coming to your show, it's not that you're untalented. It's just that people don't want to see you win. And I, I hate to say that. Mm. They just don't want to see you win. And, and, it's, and it's no reflection. And it's not always a reflection on them. Like, the, when people hear me say that, the first group of people get triggered. Like, bitch, what you mean I want to see me, man? Fuck the haters, right? But my, well, I'll, I usher everybody to think, like, Sometimes they're a hater, yes, but sometimes, sometimes you just tripping. I don't disagree with that. I don't think it's necessarily that. I don't think. I hold think on, I, real quick though, hold your disagreement because I, I do want to hear your disagreement. Okay. So what what I'm saying though, I'm just trying to make people be mindful about how they're moving because sometimes how you're moving, and it's like always move authentically to you, mm -hmm. and yeah. if that creates enemies, fuck them. I I stand on that with my whole chest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sometimes. People let their talent, or maybe someone's in their ear, hyping them up. Mm -hmm. Which hype is good, but sometimes mm -hmm. someone's in their ear hyping up a little too much, where yeah. they're feeling themselves too much, and and that's cool. Feel yourself to kingdom come. But unfortunately, it's human nature. The more you feel yourself, 
a lot of times the side effect is you start treating people different. And then when you start treating people different, especially the people who fucked with you in the past or like people who supported you, when you start when they start seeing you acting different, they will like actively stop fucking with you, stop coming to your shows, stop reposting your stuff. So and it's not to like do things to like suck their dick, you know, metaphorically, like do things just to make sure they keep fuck with you, but you have to realize that like as an artist, unless you're just doing it as a hobby and you don't give a fuck who comes to your shows, like you 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 cool seeing the chairs the rest of your life. That's fine, but if you are actively trying to build a brand, actually are trying to build a following, you have to consider your audience to an extent. You have to consider how you're making them feel. You have to consider, do they feel at home? Do they feel comfortable? In person, what kind of energy are you giving them? Are you giving them like, what's up, bro? Are you like, yo, what's good? Like, do they feel energy? When they leave your show, do they feel better or worse? It's funny that you mentioned that because you said something. and. To reference back what we were talking about earlier is freedom of consequences. When you start to start to get your ego starts to inflate, and you start mistreating people, you start being egotistical about yourself in the sense of entitlement. It don't happen overnight that. either. They'll slowly. It, it's it's a slow. It depends on what it is. Like it depends yeah. on the opportunity because we see people change before us overnight. Um, no, I mean it don't happen overnight. <laughs> like the the people will start fucking with you less and less over time. It's not just oh, like you could be bougie one day and the people still come to the next show, but over time they'll be like, oh, I see how you. Once the this community is very small. <laughs> First Everyone, of all, Everyone, <laughs> six degrees of separation. We were just talking about this off camera earlier. You have to be mindful, like you said, of your behavior. I used to be ruled as a, a prima donna, <laughs> but um, because I I required a sound check. You don't get that a lot sometimes. But now I'm a curator and I operate my things. And I've been on the other side of things. I've been at people's shows and I've done things. And now I try to create a space of, and be open and honest with my communicating skills with my featured performers and set things a certain way and have a standard to make sure that everybody's comfortable. I don't feel like I need to go on a tangent. It's all been said and done before. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so my mentor he said stop caring if these artists come to your show because these artists are not your fans they're not well, say so that again. stop caring if these artists come to your shows because these artists are not your fans Strangers. your fans are not artists your fan is not the next rapper next to you I mean if they are cool but they're probably not the the, the next artist right next to you your fan is somebody outside who, who, who got attracted to your music and is here to watch you mm -hmm. perform and stuff your artist is another is is not saying they don't want you to win, but they're still technically some another form of competition. Like they're not they're not they're not checking for you. Like, you know, at a certain point, there's they're they're out, they're in it for themselves. And not not that, that that's a bad thing, but they're trying to win themselves, they're trying to ground, they're focused on their goals and they have their specific tunnel vision. I have hella tunnel vision when it comes to certain things. I've lost um I almost have lost friends, but I've lost touch with other people who <laughs> felt that I've changed because I my, my social circle has changed because we're not in the same vein of craft anymore. Mm. I went from visual art to music, and I don't even I, I rarely talk to the visual art side anymore. And some of them said, "Oh man, you change after the music," and I'm like, "I ain't really change. I, I'm still the same person. I just do this now, and we aren't in the same thing. So we we're not in the same vein. So I don't have a." Unfortunately, I don't have the reason to call you all the time. You know, you can't call everybody in this world. You may have, you've, you've come across thousands of people in your lifetime and you've, and you've created interpersonal relationships with all these people and you can't call every single one of them. You probably got thousands, hundreds of people in your phone right now who you consider a cool associates and you're not gonna call every one of them every single day or every once a month got five six people normally that you may be in communication with and that's that it's a it's the reality and you have to be able to acknowledge and accept that the world does not revolve around you people are going to do as they will whenever they want to there's no hard feelings i've got a female best friend right she works on the boats during the summertime and because of that i can't hang out with her all the time I can't call all the time. She's super busy. But when one time roll around, it's all love, G. I ain't talked to you in six. I ain't talked to you in like four or five months because you've been on the boats doing all this. But you know, when I see you, it's like, oh, what up? Like, I'm not mad. You know. You truly have to condition yourself. You have to as accept. a business, as a business-minded person, 
and know that everybody's not your friend. Mm-hmm. Not everybody is going to be coming to your show. Like you said, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. You got to accept the, that as God, man. God going to put everything in front of you when that the time happens. You. When you got two people in front of you, it's a God. When you got 300, it's a God. Except that God made this happen for this moment right here. And it ain't, it ain't really no if ands, or buts about it. Yes, there's a little inner things your flesh could have done to make things change, but this is what it is. I hmm. want to say this because we are talking about something that's just, I'm very passionate about it. Your journey, and I'm going to say this, your journey is your journey. Respe- I think that we we're we watching people on TikTok go viral and they get 50 million views and then they're you know like the ice spice situation you know I you, watch TikTok, you, you, luck, you lucked up with that record and now you're on tour but look what's happening you know her fans are turning, <clears throat> her fans are dragging her on twitter like mm. cleopatra like Why they basically Cleopatra, Cleopatra. Who the hell is that? That's insane. She, she is incredible. That's a diabolical name. She is. <laughs> so diabolical. Wait a minute. Hey, it is diabolical. We gonna, we gonna put some respect on Cleopatra. No, no, sorry, just a name. Cleopatra. You wouldn't even say her name first time correctly. <laughs> we Cleo. respect it. <laughs> Cleo, girl. If you come back to Chicago, I got you, boo. Yeah, Cleo I love you down. And Cleo I Trapper. You, I just all love just the name. Cleo Trapper is a queen. I'm laughing at She's, the name, she shorty. is a queen. <laughs> she gives. She she went viral. Creative, for, definitely creative. She she gives viral lessons on oh, you know word. different different things. Okay. She's Respect. um she's very hood. She's very New York. Uh, I love New her. York. Okay. She's from hey, New York. Love. And now, she I was an New opener. York, to condense this situation, she was an opener for open um, for Ice Spice, and Ice Spice basically told her, "Hey, come on tour with me. I'll take care of you." She didn't take care of her. If you want to, if you want to go dive into the situation, go on her TikTok, and she she still has the post up, and she's explaining the scenarios. It's gnarly what happens in this world, but your journey is divinely your journey. Don't think that you're gonna have an overnight success. I'm 34 years old. At this age, I should be retired from the music industry. We're taught that you know by 21 you should be having 10 million Grammys and that you should be prepping for you know your greatest hits album just because she by the time you turn 25 by the time you turn 30 it's over with for you but there's people who have oprah didn't become a billionaire and well into her 50s or or something like that like 40s or 50s and something like that um she got she didn't become the oprah we knew until years later you know like there's people who i can reference tamar braxton she didn't sign her first record her third she signed her third record deal when she was 35 and auntie is like 40 something now you know like success later in life changes your perspective think about how you would act if you got it younger and you see you looking at amanda Bynes, and you looking at these people crashing out britney and you know it depends on what you're it depends on what you how you were nurtured if you are uh, mature enough to handle I that i don't know how i would have reacted to success at 13 mm. and been doing it since i'm 13 and would i still have my head on a swivel no of course. What I do? <clears throat> i'm saying like, is how you were raised in that sense now if you have people who who've been who've been prepping you and training you through that for that lifestyle then you, you're it may be easier for you to be to walk through those doors but if you if you like how a lot of these young rappers are 16 now somebody 16 in the hood and somebody throw millions at you you don't know what the fuck to do with yourself right. I'm just saying you it's a difference the, but you look at the, the way from the 90s up into the early to the mid 2000s now like you've seen a lot of girls canceling shows you've seen Sexy Red cancel shows you've seen she the girls yeah, she she canceled she quietly canceled some shows you've seen a lot of the girls lose their voices you know oh she canceling her show because her voice is you know gone out she can't utilize she can't sing now she oh she caught lip syncing or whatever i think about people who i grew up listening to like whitney and mariah like when they Never get off that canceled. stage you know they got fifty thousand. they have you know doing 18 shows after back after back well as soon as they get off the stage they got a scarf around their throat don't talk to me you know it's a different level of discipline it's a different level of yeah. um it's a mentality I heard that there's, not, like there's that. no stars there's no stars there's only celebrity and celebrity is quick Fame now is quick. Everybody wants to be recognized for something. There's no integrity behind a message. There's no purpose. That's why, you know, Phnom is really instilling in his students, you know, your Shout message. Shout out to Phnom. You know, Shout out yeah, Phnom. we love Phnom. <laughs> and um, what is the intent with 
your platform. You want to sing, like I told you earlier, like, oh, I want to be famous. Like, oh, when I was a little little boy, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my God. I, wanna be, I, thought, I thought at 13, I would be retired. I thought I would have a career <laughs> like Michael Jackson. <clears throat> and... <laughs> <laughs> you slay me every time you do that. Man, shout out Michael Jackson, man. Yo, Incredible oh, bean. The king. Literally a star. We don't have stars anymore. We have celebrities. We have ratchet celebrities. We got the shade room. We got the neighborhood talk. That is how we consume our relationships. Everybody, you have to know everything about every every second. Success is now put in a microwave and two minutes later you coming out. There's like no room for growth. Like you're not able to make mm. mistakes. You're expected to be perfect at any given like I don't is know if I would be able to survive though? making the band era. You think about all the things that are coming out with said person at that time and you know, um Abriel Day, she's been very adamant about Puff's journey and the mistreatment that she has faced a part of this entity that was, you know, essentially set up to fail you know anytime your label sends twelve thousand copies and you sell a hundred thousand in one day one thousand you know twelve thousand units and you sell a hundred thousand and they gotta rush and ship more to stores yeah. that's crazy you know um people don't know the grind they don't know the grind they see ice spice they see sexy red they see who else is hot um Rapper right now. Ice Spice, book. I don't Sexy know. Red. I ain't gonna mention no Chicago people. <laughs> you can mention Chicago. <laughs> no. Is anybody in the gas Oh my god. Like, is there anybody <laughs> in Chicago that's on charts right now that's top 40 that's really making something of the movement? Or is it just like a lot of indie people? Because I know a lot of talented people that don't have 40,000 followers. They have 1,200 followers and can outwrap anybody that's on the charts right now. One mm. of them I'm sitting next to right now. Mmm. Come on. You know, like, there's talent has become so subjective, and I think that we need to kind of steer away from the TikTok fame. The 90 seconds that you press on a button and the click that goes out to millions of people or the lack thereof if you only get 500 people. You have to learn and disconnect, man. And, and like, what y'all think about, before you wrap up, I do want to touch on these two last topics, right? I, I was like, coming back from the festival, and usually I have a bad time, wake up time. Mm hmm. But, like, I was outside all weekend. I was outside. So I, my whole sleep night schedule was fucked up. So I was like, you know what? You know, I'm the type of person I can't take a bite of my food until I got a YouTube video on. Okay. Like, I don't know if it's just me. <laughs> you feel me? That's just not me. Okay. Like, literally, my hey, YouTube will get cold. Like a new TV for me now, I do watch YouTube documentaries. My food will get cold until mm. I find the right... Because I'm not finna just watch any, any of it. What do you like to watch? Okay. I'm not gonna lie. I'll watch some, like, movie breakdown. I'm really nerdy like that. So you know what I mean? They're describing the movies and stuff? Yeah, like... Or they're rating the movies? Like, not even... Like, YouTube is... Ins well, the good YouTubers are interesting as fuck. Like, I watch Pokemon breakdowns. Like, what's the top <laughs> best pseudo-legendary Pokemon? Literally. I'm, I'm watching this. Nerdy ass shit. Eat it. You feel me? Eat it. Like, let me see what's in y'all... Like, let's see when y'all explore <laughs> page. Like, I really want to know. Because so, why, why you pull that up, though? So, I mentioned the story, though. So, I was just randomly scrolling, and then this one video showed up about like it was one was um npc streamers and the other one was like people posting their l's publicly hmm. it's like a new thing where, where like especially on tiktok and this girls and guys do it but especially i've noticed with like well at least the the youtuber was a girl so i guess she was talking about girls like girls like posting their l's publicly l's being like in relationships like but it's it's almost like they satirize it, <laughs> but the L is fucked up. Yeah. But they make a joke about it and it goes viral. But it's like it's almost like it's almost like you're um what's the word? You're glorifying your fails. But it's like it's something that's traumatic, but you but it's comedy for the people watching it. For example, this one chick literally posted like not me. Um, meeting this dude off Tinder. <gasps> oh, I see those, and they it's, like, it's, like hold my hold my hand up, and yeah. And then the picture is just like the backdrop of her, like you know, of her plants, or like yeah. some random backdrop, and playing like Billie it's Eilish like, new album or some I'm, shit. I'm and it's like not me, you know, for the sixth time, you know, ducking an actual nice guy, but then this jerk fucking threw me out the car window, like some fucked up shit. Like the stories be fucked up. But it'd be like it's, it'd be like female version of simping, kind of. It's just like not oh me doing this, making this pick for the tenth time, and then yeah. not me getting knocked up for like actual fucked up shit, or not me catching like chlamydia, like actual. 
Like, it's really fucked up details. <laughs> And then like it, it goes viral though on TikTok, like millions and millions of likes. People in the comments like either dragging them or like Man. agreeing with them, like girl, yeah, me too, like. Girl. But it's like I the feel it. It's crazy. I feel <laughs> it as a for like maybe is this Gen Alpha's way of therapy? That's kind of how I looked at it. Like is this Gen Alpha's way of connecting? Like okay, am I the only one? But on the oh. other side, I'm like, man, like this will stay with you for the rest of your life, like. Cause I imagine you just post like your L and then like you read the hundreds and thousands of comments and some of those comments like are so fucking dragging and bullying. That's one aspect or the other aspect is like you develop a habit of like trivializing your trauma, which is like, cause like if they make you a know, joke out of it. Let me, let me take on, let me take you on that, on that trivializing aspect. So depending on what it is, like, I don't know how they post these things on TikTok, but I will say talking about these certain L's can also dispel them. Mm. They can take take away the power of them happening. You can be like, uh... Ownership of your, of your bad moments? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You, you can, you, you, you know, yeah. that won't have to, you won't have to be a slave to that or you, you won't have to be like, oh, there's skeleton in my closet. You know, you're like, yeah, that should happen. Okay. Next. Yeah, y'all can laugh about it. Talk about it. All right, cool. Yeah, there's something empowering about it there's almost a level there's Are a we, there's almost a level of a, I, I don't want to say accountability because i don't know the context of all these l videos but i yeah. i can't a part of me wants to say there's a, a an accountability from that hopefully the people who are, t who are posting about these l's are actually growing from these moments and moving on but, that's, that's my but not that person took them six l's i'm like but that'd be, that'd, be the, that'd be the thing. They'd be like, not me for the sixth time or like the, the 37th time. Nah, nah, I, think that, I think that, I think that like we are in a, a, the digital era is like the era of oversharing and Over. we're, we're, we're overly sharing things. Like, why do I need to know, you know, that your baby daddy crap, you know, cracked you upside the head or, you know, like there's the thing, um, there's the thing that was going viral on Facebook over the weekend about the young man who had HIV and he shared his wee wee with everyone and um, everybody was sharing it. Um, the, the young lady, he, he posted, he, he, re he filmed it and it was just, Awesome. You know, we're not gonna um ace S T D shame. I don't wanna know about like, the story. <laughs> but you know, treatment is mm -mm. there if you have medical insurance. We are in America. You know what? Uh yeah, I get saw, tested, get get treated. I saw I did yourself. listen to something on the radio um uh, about some dude who um he had oh no no. No, no, I was watching, um, what's her name? Kamala or something? Kamala. She, she a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? She has a controversial kind of thought. Oh, Candace Owens? No, not Candace Owens. It's mm -hmm. Damn. Hey, Shorty's cold, though. I like I, I like what she thinks. She's, she, Candace? But, no, no, she no. She used no, no. to be a, she used to be a. Her name was Kamala something. But not her. She has an African last name. Mm -hmm. But anyway, there was a, a video where she was commenting. You know how, how they do videos and they comment. So basically, um. There was a dude, so these two guys were, you know, in cahoots, and one had HIV, but didn't tell the partner until later, but he said his stuff was so undetectable, he didn't feel like he didn't need to tell that person. So but he knew he had it. But he knew he had it. But he knew he had it. Undetectable and that is different. The story. Mm no, this was a this was a straight man with a straight woman, and she. No, was, I'm, just, I'm just saying the fact, yeah. just the idea of the person knowing they have part, something. Yeah. It's, it's one thing I'm, to not yeah. know, yeah. but it's nothing to know. It's still yeah. undetectable. Is different. That's a different conversation that we have to talk about at a different That's time. Different but um, oversharing was mm. the the thing. Um, yeah. There was a young lady who went viral on TikTok early in the week. Um, her name was Destiny. She went on a 25 part rant about her baby daddy that she's been with since she was 15 years old and have four kids by and how he took advantage of a mentally ill girl and had a baby by her as well pretty gnarly check that out on tiktok it's like i was floored for two days my hand i've never been so invested in someone else's business i'm you know pretty positive but like it was just like the story was just unbelievable and this relationship between her and this young man was just incredibly toxic but like people can relate to that, I guess, as you were referencing earlier, that there's Amala. a sense of mm. there's a sense of connection in the trauma to know that you're not alone. 
but also certain things don't need to be said. Like that's what I was saying earlier. Real quick, the girl's She's name beautiful. is Amala mm. Ekpunobi. She's beautiful. And she, no, she she has. And she has topics that she speaks on, and she's very thorough. How she, as she, like, she's a very like a, a middleman. She doesn't like choose sides. She plays the devil's advocate yeah. of trying to, you know, I don't know. Shorty's dope, but that was one of the videos that she nah, posted sure, about. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, bro. No, thank, th thank you for the oversharing part. Like that's that's definitely something. And it's as a content creator myself, I sometimes struggle with that. Like, how far is too far? Exactly. How much is too much? Like, what parts of ourselves <laughs> do we reserve? I draw the line. Know, we don't need to know about your game bang. <laughs> we don't need to know about your game bang. We don't Damn. need to know. Some people, but some yeah, people feel comfortable having that conversation that's with everybody. That's celebrities in general. They be having that's, those that's, conversations. But men, men have that conversation all the time. I mean, Straight heterosexual oh, men. Y'all sure talk about for the sure most wild do. shit. Yeah. But if I get up here and say, oh, I got ganged out by... Or I was in a bukkake. Yeah. Pause. Hey, no bro. homo. Hey, Joe. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I ain't with that fuck. I ain't with that gay shit. But, but, but. but I got to sit here and listen to y'all talk about, oh, uh, y'all bag this bitch from the back. Ten, and it's be like, it's like, it's a certain level of homoeroticism that a lot of straight men don't like to talk about. But that's a conversation for another day, too. Man. But that's now, your story, so you know, I've I never respect gone it. to say we done all that. But that's <laughs> just, just your example is Game, wild to say. All straight, that. straight, I mean, straight men, y'all. It's, it's a, wild. It's a lot of crazy yeah, things yeah, that yeah, exactly. I've seen. St porn has influenced a lot of come on sex, oh, indeed. sex lives indeed. and indeed. the reenactment. Kinks and, into different like, kinks and everything. Like I'm not gonna kick shame or whatever, but you know whatever. Zhuzh, 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 I'm not mad at it, but certain things I just don't partake in. And it's not my it's not my thing, you know. But right. whatever's your your vibe, just stay safe and transparency, right? Transparency is key, man. But I ain't trying to see it, see everything. Yeah. But also, like, what y'all think about the gender war? Like, I feel like on one. <laughs> <laughs> take a <laughs> shot take a shot for every time he does that throughout the podcast and see how, and how many how times are you <laughs> I'm, I'm blacked out I'm like on the floor Man. put it on the floor yeah. put it on the floor y'all carry me to the bathroom Yo, I'm listen. blowing up at the garbage can listen. you know what I'm saying <laughs> but like got me doing? <laughs> no, but, but what do y'all think about the gender war like if you all cause I, I did a poll on my Instagram and then I what was like what is the gender war you said what what do you mean by that? What is the gender war? I mean, the battle of the sexes. Like, men versus women. Just like, okay. the, the sensationalization of it on the media mm -hmm. and social uh, media. Yes, 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 well, yes, it's yes. mostly on social media and you only see it with people of color. Specifically, I never, specifically I, yeah. I never see Puerto Ricans arguing over stuff that we argue over. I never see white people arguing over it. It's so different on that side of the spectrum. Like, when we have these conversations on Facebook, Facebook and you see the thread it's 25,000 comments and 50,000 shares like and it's over the simplest stuff yeah I did a poll and the poll was like what caused the gender war and then I put like the patriarchy I put like media I put um I put like education I put like the man you only have four options but like I kind of just like asking them and then it was like a split split and a whole bunch of people voted like over 100 people voted it was like it was like 40% said media and like 35% said feminism and then like 10% said patriarchy and I forgot the rest said, I forgot my other option was. I think it was like, mm, like family and shit like that or like friends. I probably but would say What do y'all think is the cause of the gender war? <clears throat> the cause? Yeah, I, why? I, I, is I, there I guess war? I partially, I would say feminism. Um, feminism I would just what? say, um, maybe maybe the idea of it I, um, from one perspective I'll just say some some people may have felt sensitive how how strong it was you know what I'm saying like when you like from the from the idea of the protest tread lightly you know what I'm saying like tread lightly because like, I'm a feminist if, if they cancel yeah, me they cancel me you feel me <laughs> no um, and this is going off this like examples that I've seen and it's not me trying to throw anybody under the bus but um I just for, from my perspective, when I see the the protests, uh, I would just say the, the the bashing of other people sometimes could push the other people to say, "Oh, y'all ain't shit for this, y'all ain't shit for that." You feel me? Um, 
I'm I may, I'm not fully educated on that, on that topic, but I can understand. I can kind of see why it could have come from there. But I I I would say the gender war kind of pointless to me. But I will say I might believe it. It might have stemmed from feminism when it comes to um, how aggressive sometimes some come off, mm -hmm. not the majority. Some come off because feminism is basically. It, 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 is it not the protection of women? No. Or what is well, it? Equality? No. What so is it? I, wanted to, down, yeah. I wanted to definitely jump in about anytime anything bashes anything or puts down another thing, that's not uplifting. That's not right. to, that's not meant to inspire. That's not meant to bring advocacy to or right. awareness of a situation. Feminism is about women's rights, specifically about how there's a patriarchy. I mean, um, you know, something blocking or maligning. Right. And making them a marginalized group. Straight. Okay. Specifically, black women, queer black women, queer bodies, people of other, you uh -huh. know. Um, what you're seeing is sensationalized heavenly. It is the form, the extreme form of feminism. Uh -huh. It is the white women that are acting crazy right, right, on, right, on the TikToks right. and, and, you know, <laughs> crashing out in, the, in Walmart. And, uh -huh. I'm a woman! And, oh! it's, it's, very, it's very dramatic. It's right. very... It doesn't help the cause. And real feminists who are out here advocating for women's rights, will, right. who are going to legislation uh -huh. to make strange, to make sure that women still don't make you know, I think they still make 70 cents to the dollar of a man. Right. You know, women still definitely make less than what men do now. And it's right. pretty, we're in 2024. It's crazy. Now, mind you, I'm just going off generalizations. Yeah. When he asked me who started it or what. And I was just, I, when he gave me the percentages, I'm like, oh, I guess I'm, my closest idea was based off that sen um, sensationalism. Yeah. I think that, that's what we see is in your face. All exactly. Yeah. That's what I see on the that, phone. You know. That is problematic. I will never, you know, like I say, I'm, I'm a person of peace, mm -hmm. and I like to hop, operate on a high frequency. I do consider myself a gay feminist, because mm -hmm. I am in the other box. I yeah. am a marginalized person. Because there's nothing wrong with you know, e equal yeah. treatment women. There's I nothing wrong at all. I don't think that that is the cause of a, divis a divisiveness. Right. Of war. I think that people thrive on sensationalism. I think that people like to instigate I think that people, especially on social media, with everything being so expressive, yeah. like, should you should you feed your man? Should you feed your man before you feed your kids? Yeah. Right. What do you think about that? I don't have an opinion because I don't have a man and I don't have kids. Well, I have a man, but I don't got no kids. So, um, so I'm getting my food, nigga, and you better get your ass up and go fix your own plate. Mm. A question. Do you think there was ever really a gender war or did because I I feel like maybe we we were always having these ideas and conversations it's just we've now brought it to online where there's other people who had the same thoughts and ideas and now they're just coming together and now the one side is now seeing the ideas of the other side and now there's vice versa but they've always have been happening behind closed doors and now they're just all coming to light I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, so you guys, I don't want to assume because I didn't ask you, um, but how do you identify your sexual identity? Um, straight. Okay. So you guys remember on Facebook, this was the, like a couple of years ago, about the, the situation where the, the father had the child and he, took the, he bought the child something to eat mm -hmm. and he took the child back home to the mama's house. They're not together. They're not together. But she she posted the screenshots of them texts. You could have brought something for all my kids. And I think she had three, <laughs> I see she, that had three she had three kids. And um yeah, he was sitting up there. She, she, she said he had hit the son, his son had texted him or called him and said, Mom made me share my food. And he was like, I ain't bringing for other kids. Like it's things like that are kind of divisive and it it's there to create a commotion and uh -huh. it's Child, it's like, I'm, I'm a firm believer of things that can be fixed. I'm, I believe that conversations can be had if you're willing and emotionally open and have the intellectual frequency that's higher than a grape to, um, <laughs> you know, 
talk about things as a reasonable person but some people thrive on drama they dr- thrive on yeah, you gonna feed my kid that, that is a caricature that we have created <laughs> and sensationalizing you see these black boys putting on wigs and reenacting things and that's why they get mm-hmm. you hate black women and it's just a cycle of just like torment and, and trauma porn to me and y'all yeah, talk about Tyler oh, Perry and Madeer porn. that's crazy it's, that's it's, a word trauma porn it's, tra- that's, it's trauma that's porn crazy. to me I think what? that it's very traumatic when you see situations I just scroll that's right past it because I can't that's I can't a, that's relate that's not my experience you know what I'm saying I don't have a baby mama Thank God. You know, I, I often used to think when I was younger in my 20s, I was like, what would my life would be like if I was a straight man? Like, would I have a bunch of kids? Like, <laughs> would I be a man, nigga? You know, I, I got this another bitch pregnant, bro. Like, I don't even know, bro. Like, what the fuck I'm going to do? You know, like, what kind of father would I be? I, I think about things like that. Mm. You know, would I be a good father? Would I be there? Would I be one of these niggas that's running away from my responsibility? Like, I don't understand it. Who are you Because it's not my my responsibility. I'm, I don't have any children. I know that, but who are you now? I am Kahari. Right. So, I mean, morally, how do you move? Because you can I like tell. To, I feel like, for me, in my experience, like, mm. I'm in a relationship with someone, and it's we're unevenly yoked. And I'm trying. Unevenly yoked. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to configure that situation. He has a child that has nothing to do with me. I stay in my lane. I'm, I try to be supportive and offer what I think is sound advice to guide him through that process. But ultimately, he deals with his baby mom, how he deals with her. I have never met her. We never talked because that's a very sensitive thing. That is a very touchy situation. Being queer and dating someone who was on the other side of the spectrum, who had, who was straight, essentially, and had an existence or a life before meeting you. And now it crossed over. Yeah, it's a different experience. So I can't relate to the baby mama drama. I think it's childish. Probably for the best. I don't. Do you have any kids? No. Um. I know you won't get no kids, do you? I would have had to. You would have. You would have. Yeah. You got time. <laughs> would have is crazy to me. No. One was aborted. And one was in a miscarriage. Oh my god. Oh, I thought you was okay. I'm sorry. It's... Sorry about that. Yeah. I'll be, be thinking about it sometime, but don't be hitting me like that. I know for the woman, I know I'm pretty sure it's a lot more impactful. Yeah. I just got like real, 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 real hot right there. <laughs> That's Damn. that's crazy. Like that's trauma right there. Like, how do you heal from things like that? Like, Damn, you know, you hear Not about man. people so going through things like that and how it affects. You know, we think about black men. That's not. Oh, we always got to be hard. We always got. We can't be soft. We can't talk <clears> about this. <throat> you know, you don't know how that may affect. <laughs> you don't know how that may <laughs> affect. <laughs> you don't know how that may affect a man. You know, I think that as as the country or the world becomes a little bit more conscious we develop a sense of emotional sensitivity and that's why you see a lot of jobs doing these sensitivity trainings and they doing these um inclusivity trainings and you know what do you think about that so here's my thing about like so i saw barbie for the first time Mm, like last week wow. I heard it's nothing How like I heard it's nothing that? like what you think it is nothing I, like, I came into it expecting <clears throat> it to be like you know feminist like what yeah. the film power cause like it's a Barbie movie like yeah I'm, yo, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm all for that yo but the crazy talk thing talk about it G. the crazy you, you saw, saw no but I, I read I saw I read reviews I heard, it's, I read really, how it's some Oscar people, nominated right it was Oscar nominated I heard that some it people was like they broke up with their partners because of movies what yeah. the Barbie movies causing division like that I mean, I don't know about all that. I just heard it was controversial. Mm-hmm. But, but those articles I read, yeah. So what, it's like, wild. like not? I'm not gonna go into it because that's a whole other podcast. But basically, like, it just seems so forced. And I like, how you like the the like, and I'm tying this all into the sensitivity training. I feel like, and coming back to like the discipline stuff, and then it's like the grind. I feel like all of that ties into like, I feel like people should be respectful of everybody, and uh-huh. they should teach sensitivity training. But I feel like to an extent, it can be, what's the word? It can be coddling from people ever developing Hell. the mental fortitude yes. in this hard world. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? 
Like some people can be overly entitled to the ent- not the the sensitivity to the point where they become crippled in life uh-huh. and they're scared to go outside. They're scared to get a job. They're scared to take that risk. They're scared to start I a business what you're because there's about. so much sensitivity and like they, have, they and like in a perfect world, I'm with it. I, like fuck bullies and fuck people who are like rude to people and like don't yeah. consider people's empathy and past. Like fuck those people. But the reality is like. Those people ex- fucking exist. Yeah. I agree. And sometimes we can become those people unintentionally. Exactly. I think that the, in it, extremism, it, it, sensitivity extremism, like we've gotten to a point where you have to um, kind of ask for permission to, to shake, anything. Ha- shake hands, bodily contact. <laughs> you remember like w- me and you, I just met you and we hugged immediately. Instantly. That might be someone's trauma. That might be somebody's trick. I'm triggered. Or you... I think um, it was a situation that happened that I knew someone. And they was like, oh, I can't do that because it's triggering. Mm. Or no touching. Or like so many restrictions. It's a level of extremism that I don't understand. Check I this respect out. it, Check but this I, out. I just go ahead. Like, well, so I never thought I'd be saying this, but an ex of mine told me because we had a similar conversation about this, and I've got my own controversial. I don't even think anything controversial. There's certain things I agree with, certain things I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't move around with hate, but whatever. She said that we're gonna have to go through this extreme, these extreme mentalities until we find the equilibrium. So right now it's gonna go to this extreme side. So the balance in that middle was there. So right now we're going through that that flux. Yeah, it's coming down. We, it's coming we, back to balance if you notice. Exactly. Niggas is getting less PC. Have you noticed that? No, oh, f- bro. The peak PC was <laughs> like 2020 to 2022. Yo, but it's, niggas it's like 2020 to almost to last year. Last year was the peak of mm. like the PC, but I'm noticing. People are like, let's be see, like, remember we couldn't say, like, Hispanic. There was a period, you couldn't say Hispanic. You couldn't say that? All yeah, right, it's called Wait. Latinx now. You, they, they call it Latinx now. No, but you can say Hispanic again. It's cool now. You can't say Hispanic? I don't know. When could what you, you not say? You can say it. I, well, they was getting on my ass. I, I was taking this like um, oh yes like the cool it was like 2017 even, to 2020 even, even, even in my community like oh, you are you gay the N-word then, boy. you Stop can't you can't say like <laughs> you couldn't say gay you can't like now it's like oh my god it's so many different things now like I'm um oh my god it's like pansexual the he them they spirit um purple um oh, shit. Sh- there was like um somebody. I remember a close friend of mine. Stop baby car. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. See, like, you couldn't even touch nobody. Like, you couldn't do that because, like, it, it, like, boundaries. Like, you have to be, like, real. Yeah. But, like, um. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't look at me. That's the next one. I don't want to do They were non-binary, and I think they said, what is your title? Like, you know how we have Mr. <laughs> we have, like, Mr., Mrs., them, they, or whatever. They was like, oh, I want to be called chef. And people was like, chef? Like, I heard that people, one. Or people want to be called, like, giraffe. Or this person went to court yeah. and he's like, I want to be called kitty. Or, like, what? Like, it's so many different things. No, levels no, of no, 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 no. But that's partially, that's partially why I did, how I was sticking a little bit. Because there was a point when I was hanging out with my Chicago people, one person wanted to be identified as a damn fox. He was st- dead ass. Or they, sorry. I don't know. It was a... It, they present it as a woman. Okay. But she, she looked like she wanted to be presented as a fox. Like she wanted to be um, like an animal. Yes, yeah, like she's a fox. I am vixen fox. That's that's what I identify but foxes, as. Foxes like sexy when I'm in Cleopatra, school. like sexy foxy Cleopatra. Like when I'm in the school, you know how some some people's like, oh, I'm a. Identify me as a dragon or something. They want to be identified as a fox, and I like was as like, their pronoun. Yeah. Yes. No, I believe <laughs> that's the five. But I bet that was the peak. Of, that, that Gee, was the peak of yeah, like, bro. But what? I say, What's I say up? all this to say, like, coming back to the Barbie movie and coming back to like, and even I saw the remake of Avatar for the uh, first time, and then like my my friends, so like we bonded over Avatar. My friend Netflix from Germany. One? Yeah, the live action. Okay. And I, I we bonded over the out. cartoon. You know, Avatar: Last Airbender. Yeah. We the really, new one. We, from Netflix. From Netflix. Not the not the M Night Shyamalan one that he ruined. Oh, we're not gonna talk about 
but the new one that's like boats. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Which is a huge improvement over Emma Shyamalan. I love it. I love which, it. which wasn't hard to do because he, he shitted it was, on it so bad. It mm. was, that's a hard shoot. Those are yeah. hard, that's a hard show to recreate. Re- and it looked so beautiful. No, and I, I commend the show and like the visual art and like, I ain't gonna lie to comedy, but you know, I'm a purist because I saw when it came out. Like, I'm talking about, I was a kid when it was actually airing on Nickelodeon. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it hit different when you, like, actually. But any, yeah. anywho. Earth, fire, Stop. water, air. air. Uh, but I say, I say all this. Ah! <laughs> Call the ambulance. We're not even blacked out now. Now we unconscious. Oh, God. We got a cirrhosis. Andrew. Anyway. Liver. Can't tell the liver. The whole thing. But I say all this to say, like, pretty much we were, because we bonded over the cartoon, and then we watched a cartoon together and then there were like jokes in the cartoon where it's like, you know Sokka, do you know Sokka? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, we can bond over Avatar after the podcast. Like, yeah, bro, yo, let's come was, on. I'm very much Katara. I'm the mother of the group. I am Oh, you Katara. are Katara. I'm okay. very much Katara. Like, True. People bogus though, they be roasting Katara every time really? she talks about her dead mom. <laughs> but that's oh, trauma. That's, I know, but people be, people just that's, ruthless. Grieve, they tell people how to grieve. Mm. We, people grieve in different, different ways. That's a different story in a different podcast. Yeah, that's 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 facts. But anyway, if you notice in the cartoon, Sokka was like kind of sexist. That's part of his story arc. He was. Mm. Right? We forgot about that, right? Sookie. He was very sexy. Like every time he would make like a sexist joke. But it was like he's like a stupid kid. Like, yeah, and they were like calling I out for protect it in the, the show. Dad left me in charge and I have to protect the, the honor. I'm in, I'm the man. But it was part of the story arc though. Yeah. Like I like broke. how they left it in the show, because it showed his story arc. And Suki had beat him down when they got to um Kiyoshi Island. You feel me? And then that the Kyoshi Warriors were the shit because they ran you feel me? things. But that's the kind of stuff I feel like they need to show the kids. It's like, no, don't oh, just yeah, sure. don't don't hide the sexism. Like show the sexism, mm-hmm. but show the story arc. Mm-hmm. Right. Now it's just hide the sexism completely. And if you watch the remake, you know the soccer don't don't do no sexist jokes or he don't oh, do none of that. They right. they, they washed yeah. him. And, and to be honest, it took away a lot of his sense of humor. It yeah. took away mm. a lot of his his depth of character. Cause let's be real, in the real world, more dramatic. The live I have to rewatch. Little... I gotta rewatch it because I don't. No, it wasn't as funny as I it have, used no, to be. It's I'm not, not nowhere the animated there. version because I'm trying to think like the sexist jokes. I'm it like, wasn't I'm crazy. crazy but... like, he made a lot of different remarks. Um, okay. Yeah, like he used to be cooking guitar yeah. and like, stuff like that. Uh, when, he, when he got with Sa- okay. um, Suki okay. and stuff okay. like that, and um. That was definitely an interesting relationship. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's why. But the whole okay, point was, like, he was on, obviously, yeah. the, the characters made him obviously sexist to give him a story arc, because at the end, he's, like, more balanced. Mm-hmm. And he, mm-hmm. But that's that's the beauty of storytelling. Yeah. You don't start off perfect. It's like, yep. you start off kind of messy, it's cobwebs. That's it's like, you feel me, like, you're an orphan. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. your extra chromosome. And then, over time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're struggling. Right, right. You do- right. he, he grew an extra chromosome. I'm like, what? You, I, you hey, okay. me, I'm that was a stretch. Sorry, that was a stretch. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a stretch. I'm like, what? Okay, my bad. I got, two, I got carried away. I got carried away. Extra, maybe not an extra chromosome. <laughs> <laughs> not extra. I'm going to highlight something. Take the, take the chromosome back. Okay. <laughs> sorry, oh, this is why the tree house should be going off tangents. But anyway. <laughs> Anyway, I say all this to say, like, tying all of this shit back together before we wrap up, like, yeah, like, what do y'all think about, like, that censorship? Should, should we kind of, like, allow people to... I do agree in, in a degree of sensitivity, but what do y'all think about the world in this direction of kind of just over over-censoring everything in certain aspects because in other aspects I feel like when it comes to sex oh we show everything we don't censor that they like, should sex is so keep. open with sex but when it comes to like opinions on what people think about sexuality or opinions on what people and I'm not saying those are good or bad but like the censoring of that or do you think that should be continued or do you think people should be allowed to believe what they want and then see what people think about it like you want to be sexist okay put that shit on the internet and then let people show you how sexist you are and then maybe that'll change versus like oh you can't even put that. Nin- the- 90s cartoons were the best teachers. Mm. 90s cartoons were the best teachers. Sometimes it was wild. 90s TV shows as well. 90s TV, yes. 90s fashion. Yes. Just in general. This is before, like, the, the like right before everything started becoming cen- censored and censorship changed. And 
I think the censorship should leave. I think the over sensitive or the over censor, uh, censoring things are enabling the newer generations. Mm. So now people don't even know some people who who don't who who don't know themselves yet are don't don't have a will. Don't don't know how to operate they don't actually. Have the character the the, mm-hmm. the struggle of, you know, I remember when I was younger, like I'm we had this conversation earlier. I was born in 1990, so like I was bullied. It kind of gave you a little, a little bit of character mm-hmm. to speak up for yourself, to know, you know, that this isn't right. To you know, say things back. You know, defend right. yourself. Yeah. Now there's a veil that is protecting people. I do see things on both sides of the spectrum. My Gemini ness is just <laughs> definitely like Gemini right now. Um, you do need someone there to protect you, but at the same time to censor everything. Oh, you can't like even on Twitter. Like I think I put something. <sighs> oh, people are getting people are losing their lives over 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 comments in the comment section. I'm no, like, like, you can't like, say you, you losing your life with someone who says something who crashing out real bad. Like, in yeah, the, in the phone, crashing out like, crashing out real bad. Yeah, yeah. Like, stop people crashing out real bad. Like, like you can't say anything. Like even on the sensitivity. You heard about Facebook, that. Facebook, cyberbullying, com- community guidelines on Instagram. There's certain oh, keywords that you cannot say. Should I just come out with like? Um, you get banned like um, I've seen people that like, I got shadow banned for this I'm like what that's not even appropriate like that's not even inappropriate like what yo I got shadow banned cause I posted a photo with a uh with a man on a fish. <laughs> a man riding a fish? yeah no 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 it was a, <laughs> I go lie, I it was a, it was a big ass goldfish on a naked man you couldn't see the man you couldn't see the man though but you could tell the man had no clothes on but the fish was on top of him and it was like this is inappropriate I'm like boy it's, it's funny very, as hell it's very weird to me like <laughs> she's like fuck your story no 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 not like weird like that but it's just like silly like stuff like that like you can't yeah. say certain there's certain keywords that you can't yeah. say that are triggered you know th- this comment your 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 account will be locked for 72 hours because yeah. you restrictions and you know it's so many different things but then, you, but then you could go ahead and post like some hentai shit with tentacles and then that mm. that clears the algorithm i've seen people literally post porn on facebook Literally, that was a thing at a point. They literally post porn. You could do it now. They they but they put the link in the comments, um, and then now I guess the guidelines can't control what the comment what the link does link leads you to. Mm. So they'll literally post porn. But oh my gosh, she see that's I can't believe you don't see that. We follow also, like a lot of no. I, I don't. I the don't. explore page is literally porn on Instagram. If you go to <laughs> the explore page, it's basically it's porn. No, I I, it's I, I really don't food. because. You see that? Because I would say because of the age we grew up in, I, I kind of hold true to the, the time before social media hit me very hard. So, yes, I would scroll, but it doesn't I'm not an all day scroller and I don't have, I, I don't I, I this is the matrix. This is the dream world. And I, I choose not to subscribe to it. So if I open up Facebook. I will and I'll have notifications. I'll look at the notifications. OK, nothing else is going on. I turn my phone off. Same for Instagram. All right, I got a like or someone comment. I look at it. I turn it off, and you're not and, as attached to social media yeah, as yeah. other people. And I like, don't want to be, bro. I don't yeah. want to be. It's but, not but real. But some people, but that's, their, that's their that's their source of income. So th- so they are driven in a different aspect to yeah. create this content. Like I can't even like I told you about the young girl that was like, I was face. I was in, I'm Instagram famous. What does that mean? What does fame mean? We have to challenge that. validation. YouTube like, shorts will get me though. The YouTube shorts. The YouTube, YouTube shorts will get me. Ah, go through the YouTube shorts. I'm like, damn, I gotta go. I, I gotta the YouTube shorts. Yo, but my YouTube, you see the cooking ones where they be chopping up the fish and seasoning them and then frying them like in a wild the boy stuff. I like shorts though. Yeah. Did you see the one that's um the guy? He's in the college dorm. He cooks with the like little. Oh, I seen dude. those. I follow he Chrissy. Makes Chrissy ass eats. Shit. I'm obsessed <laughs> with Chrissy eats. Is that like the um what's it called? The little white girl that eats. She's like, what are you eating today? Ah, oh, I've, I've just heard of her. But is She's that like, a, what's it called when it's like people watch you eat? Mukbang. Is that like mukbang? Bookbang? You mean mukbang? Muk, 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 mukbang. Oh, yeah. is that the dude who fish? So that's basically, no, a mukbang is when you sit there and you eat and you talk. On camera, yeah. Like the girl that eat the, um, baby! She eat the tacos. I don't agree with she that. eat the, um, oh my God, I have to find her. Okay. We need a group chat so I can put this up in the group chat for y'all. Did they? Did some of those people die? She ate. No, she's still alive, bro. But the thing is, people do die. The people like this one Instagram was streaming and then he jumped off a cliff. People just be trying to do anything for their five seconds of fame. But hey, bro, let's 
man, what's to y'all, boy? Bro, I life mean, is so beautiful. It is not the phone. Life is not the phone. There's so much more to life. Look at, but look, look, I'd rather somebody look into the sun instead of looking into that phone screen. Like, bro, bro that's all I used to do. Look at some leaves. Go touch grass. Bro, for real, Sun go gazing. touch grass, man. Like, have a walk. People and my Feel the air on my your boyfriend, skin. Me and my boyfriend was just talking about this over the weekend because we was talking about Power Rangers. He was like, remember when you used to want to go outside and play? And like, that gave you something like let's go reenact in our own episode of Power Rangers. These kids are like four years old coming out of their mama's vagina with TikTok. And like I have a I have a friend, his nephew, that's all give me your Don't phone. That scare you sometimes? It's it's free. You see the youth on the iPad or looking through the they YouTube. Are I'm like, to, like, damn bro, oh, like bro. you 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 like out, out of the room, you on so, social media. Like, ugh. It's like and it's like we're only gonna see the effects. Oh, a soccer ball at their head. Play with that. You <laughs> feel me, bro? Like the effects that it's having on their imagination, their curiosity, no. their yes. IQ. Like I don't even want to. I feel like it is making them maybe more like intelligent as far as like knowledge. They're probably getting more knowledge. A little but, trivia stuff. But like imagination and knowledge is two different things. Y'all, Indeed. did y'all hear about that? Like, so we're we're out of COVID. With COVID is considered no longer considered a global emergency as of 2023 as of may 2023 yeah so covid is a down a with covid you know down. y'all got vaccinated it's, it's yeah i did um but, <laughs> but neither here nor there because that was that, <laughs> that, 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 that creates a division amongst itself. Like it's remember, beautiful. Oh, I, I, get, I, I can go in the club. Your own podcast. I can, I can glow. I can get to the club. You can't because you're not vaccinated. Oh, oh, you ain't get your shot. Ooh. <laughs> like it's that a lot of stupid. All hey, you know what's crazy? crazy. The, the vaccination thing is so crazy. I was on the. I don't care how I, look how I sound. I was on this page <laughs> called FatLife.com. Had a profile. Fat right? Life. I'm fucking crying. Yo, and it was like, and it, and it was some people who were posting like, we can't meet if you're not vaccinated. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a, I remember they, that. It was they, real. Take, they take it very, very seriously. You said, yeah. we, need, we need the, t- I'm like, bro, we need the SED test and then we need a, a vaccination proof. I'm like, bro. SED, who fuck you? I mean, what wrong with y'all, it's bro? It's wild. Anywho, this has been a great podcast. <laughs> um, no, like, I want you all to just take time Separate yourself from the world, whether that means going out in nature, whether that means closing your windows, cut, turn off all your lights, turn off your fucking electricity. Cause like there's all these electronic waves, like even your refrigerator mm-hmm. makes sounds. Like it's like, <laughs> you feel me? Like it's little shit you don't even yeah. realize. Mm-hmm. The little hums. The little hums. Like but mm-hmm. our brain. There's this part of our brain that like it ignores. Like you know you see your nose twenty four seven, but it just turns it off. Cause it's like it's always there. It's not beneficial to see your nose. There was something I wanted to say about technology. Cause something you said about it killing your imagination, and that's very true. Understand the images that you see. Your brain is always processing those things. So be mindful when you want to be creative. Be mindful of what you're actually looking at, because that will steal your creativity. It will take your brain process, and it will. You will be processing this instead of processing what's around you, Mm. and this is such a fast drainer mental drainer that you'll be drained when you you ever get off your phone and just feel kind of like like a shortened battery or something or yeah. your brain just like oh, i need TikTok. to relax for a second you feel anxious in your stomach i don't yeah. do, I don't do yeah. tiktok like i literally was on tiktok for like in three hours it went by and i was I like what just TikTok. happened <laughs> yeah like that's it's the plan. crazy yeah. That's the plan. And it's like, just see what happens when you're in that darkness and just observe those thoughts. Observe your body. How does your stomach feel? Mm-hmm. Do you have that like feeling in your feet? Like, I was hanging with somebody yesterday. Like she kept, she had this like tap about her feet. Some people have like nervous tics. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, um, I all of those. just I pay can't... attention to all of those things, right? <laughs> I can't even sit down too long. You I'm over here fidgeting. I'm over Hey, but I'm here. <laughs> exactly, but at least you're aware of it. You feel yeah. like, but it, people be doing this, they don't even be aware of it, right? Mm. Like harness, sharpen that skill of awareness that all humans have. Yeah. And behind that skill of awareness is gonna lie the secret to like all the things that you want to do that you're currently not actively striving towards or hasn't manifested in your life yet. Yeah. It's because you keep on having these like self-sabotaging thoughts going on in your unconscious 24 yeah. 7 but until you can actually 
take space to like quiet out all the noise and realize that you're having these thoughts you don't even know that there's the thoughts that you're having to even start a program of healing like adding more shit like you need to remove before you need to add and um yeah that's that's the advice that i got for today's podcast but before we wrap up what final words do you all have and how can we reach y'all on socials final words man give yourself grace understand you make mistakes um be account- accountable for all, for those mistakes understand what accountability is accountability is not an apology it is an acknowledgement of your faults and then your choice to grow after that to not repeat the same come on uh mistakes uh you can find me at king kwan k-h-i-n-g-k-w-o-n once again shout out to mastermind shout out to gay when they see this um yes i love that kwan <laughs> Man, when I when I choose to be, you know what I'm saying? Be on be on my Charleston white tip. Give him the give him the fool or give him the wise. You feel me? <laughs> you right. He can do both. Yep. He can okay. do both. Yeah. Her. I love it. <laughs> Come on. Um, I would say don't compare your journey to that of others. Your journey is uniquely yours. Your tribulations your trials your struggles you can't it's one of a kind you have to go through it <clears throat> to grow through it to yeah, it, it, it tree gotta grow Roots. seasons change yeah. things <laughs> happen but as long as you stay steadfast and dedicated to the vision things will be okay Indeed. um every Every ending is a new beginning. So, and my name is Kahari Kyles. You can find me at K A H A R I K Y L E S. And I'll be having a show next Friday. Spooky season is upon us, Friday the 13th. I'm killing yeah. Jason. Michael Myers. No, but I'm, I'm going to be killing it on the stage. Mm. You know. Oh. <laughs> on killing that on note. The stage. <laughs> You know, people say Michael Jackson passed away, but he lives in all of us. Yeah. Pause. Spiritually. <laughs> Are we drinking Jesus juice after this? Yo, it's the fact that you said pause. That's a good no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. If you didn't say pause, I don't want to even know, I know, I know. No way, it just all hit me like, you know. Anyway. <sighs> Jesus juice. Oh, Jesus juice is, is wild. Is, I want to um, drink some Jesus juice. I feel like that could sell. <laughs> Where are we going with this but, conversation? But, but. <laughs> <laughs> Always remember, this is not the end. This is not even the beginning of the end. But mm. perhaps it is the beginning. No, I fucked it up. <laughs> yes, keep that in there. This is not the end. It's not even the beginning of the end, but perhaps this is the end of the beginning. Basically, so for everybody going through something hard right now, just know that you may be too young to realize that like shit can get harder and this might be the hardest part of your life so far. You might think it's the worst thing in the world, it's into your world. But just like just know that this is just the beginning. Like this is this is just the very like fetus process of like the bone stretching and the mind expanding and just the expansion of your consciousness, your life, which is an uncomfortable process. And you might be f- thinking about maybe suicide, you know, not to go dark, but maybe thinking about, you know, those depressive thoughts or like you may be thinking about what's the point of living anymore. But just know, just know that as all things, that too shall pass. And as you conquer that L, you're going to realize that you have so much life, more life to live. And as each L becomes a W, then you realize that, you know what? I can handle any L and then there's no reason for me to even think that life is over because I'm used to handling L's <clears throat> but not to say that you are deliberately staying stagnant though you know because some people be like I'm good at handling L's so they only it's like self-sabotage don't do that but handle L's as you're striving for success or whatever you are and yeah you'll be you will be unbreakable stay well my brothers and sisters and remember rare fish blue fish <laughs> I'm screaming. <laughs> One fish, two fish? You know. Nick Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Give a dog a bone. You know what's crazy? <laughs> I just started watching that movie like five days ago for the first time in my life. Cat Word. Yeah. <laughs> you never seen Cat Nat before? With Mike I have, Myers? but I didn't know that's where it came from. No. It, was it Mike Myers, right? I, I guess it 
the, the, the live action, action version? No, no, no. That's a Spike Lee movie. What we're talking about? No, I'm talking about the um the one with Marlon Wayans. Ew. Oh, oh, oh it was it was Spike Lee. My bad. I know. I know. Bye. They always smash my black card. Wait, 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 wait. Don't be a menace. While, while like, drinking juice in the yeah. hood. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> There's a nigga in prison saying that. Yeah, fish, blue fish, warm fish, two fish. <laughs> yeah, bro. The scene. That's something that's kind of yeah, that's seen, that's seen, Bro, yeah. I'm, I'm today years old. Like, I really just now seeing that, bro. Never be like that, bro. That's, that's, that's I classic. just seen Baby Boy, like. Oh my god. I, I know the podcast's over, but I just seen Baby Boy, like, maybe like a year ago. And I'm happy I've seen it as a grown man because I, as I watch it, I'm like, bro. It's on Netflix now. I'm like, boy, why is you grown as hell? Still, like, leaning under somebody, boy. But he, was on, but he was 20. He was 20 years old. Really? Yeah, he was okay. 20. I ain't know the age. I just she, made him live with his mama. He was, he was doing all the baby stuff. He just started early. He, no, he was 20. Mm. He was 20 in the movie, so yeah. he was definitely 20. That movie came out in 2001. I, I was, was 11 say, years old. I didn't like the message of the movie. You didn't? I, I didn't, hell no. I, I think he I, grew I, up I, entirely too fast. As always, stay hydrated, stay breathing, and then good oxygen. And most importantly, <laughs> stay busy. <laughs>